But right now, we're going to talk downtown Battle Creek, one of my favorite subjects. And uh, downtown development director John Hart is back with us this morning. Hi, John. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. We had you on just last week. We talked about a number of things, but I felt like we really could talk more about specifically the incubator program that's going on in uh, downtown Battle Creek and uh, a few other things. But I also, uh, you know, I bumped into you down at mm -hmm. the kitchen. And, uh, in fact, you were climbing the ladder, hanging the sign sure. there, which I thought was pretty good. You know, <laughs> uh, you're not afraid to roll up your sleeves and get dirty or fall off an icy ladder if you had to. Hey, I'll do what it takes. I guess so. But uh, it was nice. I went into uh, Cafe Rica and had a coffee and chatted a little bit. And uh, and I guess what I didn't realize is that you're a Battle Creek guy. I am a Battle Creek guy. My family comes from Battle Creek. Through and through. So, yeah. well, tell us a little bit about that. Where did you go to school? Well, I actually went to school, um, graduated from uh, Bellevue, you know, just a short distance away. Uh -huh. um, but uh, my family uh, originally originated from Battle Creek. My mom is a St. Phil graduate, and my dad's a Battle Creek Central graduate. And my grandparents are actually from here, too. And, and you had a, a grandparent with an interesting job. Yeah. Um, uh, my my uh, grandparents owned the roller skating rink. Uh, that was on Gogwak Lake, one of the last pieces of uh, of the um, entertainment district up there on the northern end. You know, when we do our history notes, that pops up from time to time. And I think I said recently that that was kind of one of the few things that uh, T. Corgus and Boyle got right when he wrote The Road to Wellville, mm -hmm. that that was the recreational and entertainment area for Battle Creek. It was also mm -hmm. where we got all our water and ice. Sure. <laughs> but uh, Gogwak Lake, man, there was all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, it, it actually attracted my grandfather to Battle Creek. He performed in 1927 at that uh, particular um uh, venue, and then later came back in the 30s and bought it. He was a vaudevillian and a contortionist uh, known as uh, William H. Tozer, the Boy Wonder. He did all kinds of skating, inline skating tricks. Really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and where was this roller rink? So it's right where uh, where some people uh, remember the Waterfront restaurant, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah. it was that entire property, and it stretched down to around where the DNR boat launch is, from what I recall. And uh, my, my parents met there and grew up there. So products of the 50s, the mid 50s, um, and then became like semi-professional roller skaters. But at the time when my, they got married, um, my mother decided she didn't want to own a roller skating rink. And so my grandmother uh, took it down subsequently. Ah, and then uh, the waterfront uh, came there and now that's about to go away and mm -hmm. got a new development coming in there as well. Yes, a proposed development. And that's why that, that plays a special, uh, has a special place in my heart because I'd love to see that end of Gogwak Lake uh, come back in a, in a, and come back in a way that a lot of people can enjoy it, both on a retail and a service level um, and in a recreational level. So it'd be, it'd be wonderful to think about that lake as the gem that it was, you know, back at the turn of the century. Sure, yeah. What are your memories about downtown Battle Creek then? Oh, kid? I had a ton of memories. My mom and dad were also very actively in theater. So they were part of the Civic Theater and part of the uh, mm -hmm. folks who renovated it um, in the in the late 60s, early 70s. And the uh, Judge Coleman and, uh, and, well, both Judge Coleman's uh, were very active in that. Uh, boy, don't get me going on this subject. I, right. I went on and on uh, last week about it because uh, they had uh, procured the Strand Theater. Mm -hmm. Um, down there on Michigan Avenue and uh, really put a lot of elbow grease into it. And they really had something there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they kind of lost it and through, well, like I, the maid of Schwarzkopf told me the story and said, mm -hmm. basically the, the city asked if they, would, you know, like to sell it to them. And because of the maintenance being mm -hmm. so difficult. And then the next thing, you know, uh, somebody didn't like it and they tore it down, built a fake waterfall. Right. Well, I remember as a as a very young child running up and down, not only in the Civic Theater and through the balcony and all that, but also out on the street and uh, yeah. up through the mall. And uh, yep, bought some of my first uh, uh, fish, I think, at a pet store that was down part of the, the walking mall. Um, saw movies, all that kind of stuff. So I remember it. I remember certainly the tail end of it. Um, I have memories all the way through the mall being developed and McCamley Place being developed and then watching uh, many of the buildings uh, come down. So it kind of stimulated a lot of sort of um, my thought process now uh, as a city planner when I studied yeah. in college. Yeah, I mean, you're a city planner. You're, you're, you're 
you know, your job is to try and rejuvenate downtowns. You did that successfully in Hastings, mm -hmm. um, which I love to go to Hastings. I got a lot of restaurants there. I love that secondhand store. Mm -hmm. I, but, uh, you know, I don't see many empty storefronts in mm -hmm. Hastings. And right. when you left that job there, I don't think they had any, did they? Right. It was it was pretty full. And, and since I've gone, they've added additional housing, which is great. We started uh, with nine units just soon uh, before I left, and uh, they probably double or tripled that now. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's all about critical mass. And we, I tell this story an awful lot because people want to compare downtown Battle Creek or Battle Creek in itself to other small thriving cities. Well, um, most of those cities have uh, self uh, and, and implied growth uh, limitations, right? They're very small. They're 1,700, they're 2,300. So they live within those boundaries. And, and Battle Creek is, uh, as we've said a number of times, the third largest city geographically. So we have a lot of area to cover. Uh, we only have uh, upwards of 53,000 people. So um, we have to create critical mass. And that's, uh, we're in the process of that. I talked to my mother just yesterday um, and she said, hey, when can we have a tour? When can my... Uh, uh, card ladies come and have a tour of downtown like you used to give us in Hastings and I said we will let's wait till summer because in summer we have a little more critical mass with BC cargo mm -hmm. with people getting on the river with people using the trail um, with the restaurants opening up with the farmers market and food truck Fridays it gets a lot more exciting right because we're infilling we're back back filling uh, some things that we're missing right now downtown but that's sure. critical mass it's it's having the people there um, it's having um, a commercial district uh, where in Hastings or a Marshall, you might have two districts, you know, a regional shopping district, uh, maybe a little bit of a neighborhood district and a downtown. In Battle Creek, I think we've calculated 19 commercial districts that we have. So mm -hmm. when you when you think about Calhoun Street and Urbandale and Capitol Avenue Northeast and Southwest, so there's lots of places for us to go, right? So we have to focus our efforts. You mentioned the downtown mall. We're talking with uh, John Hart, downtown uh, development director, Battle Creek. Um, you know, Sears really missed the mark where they discontinued their catalog service just about the time that they could have probably started trans transitioning that into internet sales. And we know what happened. Do you think that the downtown malls, and I think, you know, Kalamazoo was the mall city. I think they built it in 59. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think that that was kind of ill-timed also? I mean, they came along, it seemed like a great idea, but then right after that, shopping malls outside of the downtown came along and cities were left with this place where nobody could drive. Well, I think that seems to be a trend, right? Like about the time someone catches on to something, it's already over. Yeah. <laughs> so so putting, uh, things, putting things to uh, bricks and mortar, um, you know, large uh, capital projects like that, um, yeah, it can backfire. But, you know, so, so we're at where we're at right now. And, you know, right. we, what we're trying to transition now is to be nimble, right? There's no harm in creating residential development. People, uh, sure. people like it. The Heritage Tower is a hundred year fix. You know, we're going to get that thing uh, in quick order uh, uh, back on the tax roll and having people live in it and being productive. So there's no harm there. People are moving to the urban core. So it's, well, there's no fear of us being on the backside of that. Um, and then as, as it relates to uh, how people shop and dine, uh, for a while now, people have been going boutique. Um, it's funny because we describe boutique. When I started in Hastings, you know, four, 13 years ago or whatever it was, um, people would say, oh, what's this thing boutique? And, you know, I said boutique is much like what we had in the 40s and 50s. It's funny we call it boutique now, but it's a it's a shoe store with limited amounts of shoes. You know, where the it's owner a owner works there. Where the owner sure. works there. Yeah, it's a cheese and salami and, you know, a deli store. It's it's all these things. It's a it's um, you know, someone who sells hats, right? And it's in a thousand square feet. It's it's funny cuz it's exactly what was happening in the turn of the century when a blacksmith, you know, or a um, a potter or someone, you know, even before the turn of the century, uh, start opening these places in these small little rural areas. So we're just sort of returning to our roots now and now we have the internet to deal with so people have to be nimble and that's as we talk a little bit about bc cargo and the kitchen that's what we're trying to imply that people have to do it's not just bricks and mortar it's bricks and mortar and the internet sure yeah john hart is with us downtown development director for the city of battle creek the uh, incubator program um basically is just what it sounds like um started out well, one of the ways it started out was with the uh, cargo uh, area, the BC cargo down next to the train station, mm -hmm. which is a cool thing. Where did that idea come from? Well, 
so in my travels, you know, to larger cities like Chicago and St. Louis and New York, um, I kept seeing this adaptive reuse of uh, shipping containers, you know, um, and they were coffee shops and uh, little surf shops where you could rent boogie boards and things like that near the lake. So I thought, man, at some point I'm going to, I'm going to turn this into something I'd like to do something like that. I could see how you could do bike rentals and other things. And then, um, when, when I came to Battle Creek, started thinking about the critical mass and how we didn't have, um, stores, you know, the, 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 the issue with downtown is we were left, you know, with 20 years worth of la very large, large buildings that were going to take extreme amounts of money, million dollars to get rehabbed, right? The dollar right. buildings people hear about. Right. Yeah. And so, so the idea, you know, sort of was like, well, we got to get some critical mass. Um, that's the housing. We also need to get some s support uh, services like a little, a little grocer or a little convenience store. So someone gets some soda, water, band-aids, that aspirin, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm some hosiery, whatever it might be that people are asking for while they're downtown. And then we want to, you know, live it up a little bit and get some retailers and, and things like that. Well, it's still so hard, you know, to find a, there's one or two buildings that might be a thousand square feet and that rent's going to be a thousand or 2000 a month plus utilities could be triple net. You know, you never know how, how it's not just $10 a square foot or $12 a square foot. There's all kinds of added costs to getting in business. And so we thought, well, how can we do something that can um, sort of bolster that, right, on a, a low entry? And so after a couple of years of pondering it and me, I did, I did a, re a drawing, uh, a 3D drawing on Google SketchUp, and I sort of passed it through the powers that be and, and started discussing it. And lo and behold, you know, two, uh, two years after I got here um, and we more solidified uh, where we're going with uh, downtown development and with uh, district development in general, small business development, I pitched it again and uh, Ted and I talked about it and he said, let's do it. So um, we went out and rallied, uh, got our budget in order. Even the uh, Visitors Bureau helped with the purchase of one of those, um, infused uh, upwards of 140K, about 20 grand a piece for each of them, outfitted them. They're 160 square feet. They include uh, heat and electric. Um, they also include a uh, each each of the we have seven of them and if you're part of it you get a uh, membership to the chamber of commerce so you become a real chamber member um, that's included with the rent and um, and the lease is twelve hundred dollars it started out at, at sixteen we backed it down we took a month off because of cold weather sure and uh, now we go uh, mm -hmm. May through October this year and uh, it's uh, twelve hundred bucks that's it that's the that's the risk you have to take on top of probably what about another thousand dollars to outfit yourself with equipment and and product and then you just launch your business and and the location became available as the farmers market moved to the festival mm -hmm. market square and uh, so uh, that kind of worked out uh, pretty good and uh, we didn't need that parking area per se so it's kind of a neat little thing right across from the post office and Kellogg Arena there. Now, the idea then is just to try and get these businesses as they grow into brick and mortar. And you put a thing right in the middle there, kind of a step toward that, mm -hmm. uh, the kitchen, which yep. we talked a little bit about last week. But just give us the brief overview on that. Right. And, and let me back up one step and just say that the reason we chose that uh, parking lot was because it's got high visibility from the post office. It's an underutilized parking lot. Uh, when people come to town that might not stay downtown for very long, they are going to the post office. They can look across and see this point of interest, right? Mm -hmm. It is one block, uh, less than a half a block, I guess, from the farmer's market. It's when they're within clear sight of the headquarters and the R&D, right? And full blast. So, And you see it and you think, wow, what's that? I got to go check this out. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and we're working on uh, even uh, more softening features for that site for this year coming up. Um, as well as programming. So it should be pretty dynamic um, this year. And we've got a bunch of people interested. But now uh, moving forward, uh, we had some we, we had some really good success there, right? So one of our one of our tenants is now up to the mall uh, with a kiosk. Um, as you mentioned, um, Cafe Rica, we've moved moved them from BC Cargo to the kitchen. And mm -hmm. the kitchen's a, a a retail food service incubator. So the next step in this uh, pipeline of entrepreneurism is to take someone from this uh, 160 square foot to maybe six or 700 square foot with a little bit of additional rent with a full build out. It's not seasonal any longer. It's it's full time. Sure. And the idea is to get them in there, have them there for a year and uh, and then go month to month after that with the hopes that what we'll we'll see is the other property uh, becoming developed in the downtown or or near downtown. 
and then transition them into um, uh, a full rent from somebody else, likely uh, a full development, which may take six months or eight months. And while they're doing that, they're in business today, right? Uh, the other beauty of this kitchen is that it takes on two tenants. Um, it is retail oriented. It's not just a straight incubator kitchen like you might just produce food in. It, the, mm -hmm. the idea is you're selling. Um, so you're meeting your customer as well. And it's certified by uh, the local county uh, health department um, for food service. And then it's also by MDAR, uh, which is a state licensing for production. So both of these entities can not only sell retail, but produce. And then their production can be sold on the internet, through Facebook, through Marketplace, um, or stocked on shelves in local businesses. And, and if they need more, they can always then have be reinspected and mm -hmm. bump it up a couple of levels, yep. depending on what type of business that right. wants, wants to go. Right. So, on. so after yeah. a year's time, um, and with incubators, uh, your goal is to have an anchor, you know, that creates some stability, and then have another uh, additional or or more um, tenants that then fill, backfill. Uh, maybe they're uh, not going to move as fast as the anchor will move to, to move out or to stay. Um, so you kind of, it's, um, it's always in flux, but what you're trying to do is create stability. And then from that, bring in other folks in midstream. So we'll have a full season of BC Cargo. Then, um, then we'll start to transition our two, which is simply sensational berries also. I don't want to fail to mention that Marquita. Mm -hmm. She has some amazing berries, right? And uh, Valerie Burns on staff uh, found her on, on Facebook and wanted to encourage her to come out and be part of BC Cargo. And, and she was part of BC, BC Cargo in the truest sense of a pop-up, a tent, right? So she would come and do some events and things. And through that process, now she's gone bricks and mortar too. So she's kind of a tenant partner of uh, mm -hmm. Cafe Rica. Yep. And, uh, and so she can produce product there in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, but if she's not there, they can sell it. For that's her. that's true. It's a great partnership. And we're so grateful mm -hmm. that our first two tenants get 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 along so well. Right. So Cafe Rica is there. They're the anchor tenant. They're, they're open at 630 a.m. Close at six. Marquita can come in during that time period and make some fresh uh, berries, put them in the display case deliver, um, have her clients pick up. She can come there after six and have special events. Um, they both can have events on the weekends. Yeah, it's it's a it's a great um, first partnership, first tenancy. Before you go, John, when I bumped into you downtown uh, last week, I said, you know, I, I see quite a few empty storefronts down Michigan Avenue. Some of them are really nice buildings. Others need an awful lot of work. Uh, do you get discouraged when you drive down there and see that? So I don't get discouraged, but I understand how other people can, because what you what you see, right, perception becomes reality sometimes. And um, but what we know and what I know as a practitioner is some of this work takes 10 years, five years, three years. It gets exhausting to some folks that aren't in that arena. But for those that are in the arena, um, we know that it takes a lot of time and effort and you can go through a couple uh, iterations of, of a deal and some of them fall straight on their face and others take off really fast. So um, bear with us, folks. Uh, we're, we're, we're out there. We're working hard. You've got new city government in the last, uh, what, four or five years. Um, new mindsets. We're moving forward. Um, you're going to see some great change in 19. Uh, we're looking at a brochure brochure here in front of us, which lists five plus BC Cargo and Kitchen. But there are another uh, half a dozen right behind that that are in the works right now. And uh, we're going to start to see some of those roll out in 19, certainly by 20. Um, lots of programming. So um, stay tuned, as they say, but also be positive. I think if folks think about this community more like they think about their family, you know, you give family, when family goes through uh, tumultuous times, you kind of give each other a break, right? You get around each other, you give them a, a huddle, and, and you, you, you move forward as fast as you can. And that's this community needs to start thinking about that about itself, too, I think. You know, um, we've got a lot of work to do, but let's huddle around each other. Let's focus on the positive. Um, and if you can, if you're in the position to, to uh, help and move things forward, join in. Because it's a lot easier to move forward when we don't resist each other. John Hart, Downtown Development Director. Thanks for stopping in. We look forward to the next update. Thank you.